Hey everyone, today we are going to go over how can you identify potential targets and resistance zones when you're pretty much already at all-time highs. So this is something that, especially as the market has started to hit new all-time highs, I did this video in late January of 2024, you know, how can you choose a target if essentially you don't have anything to look at to the left? And what do I mean by that? That's, that's something that is used a lot in the market. Essentially, when you look to the left, you're looking for pivots, you're looking for previous resistance, you're looking for support, you're looking for VWAPs, anything that price has respected in the past or anything that's really happened in the past. But when you are at all-time highs, if you look here, we're looking to the left, there's, there's no price action up here because we're at all-time highs. So when you're at all-time highs, you can't use, in this case, this previous all-time high zone as potential resistance. You, you essentially have nothing to use that is, a, as I mentioned, a pivot point, a previous resistance zone, or anything like that, a VWAP if you're looking at an anchored VWAP. So how do you find targets and potential upside levels that could potentially be resistance? Well. This is where the 1.618 extension comes into play, which is essentially a Fibonacci, part of the Fibonacci sequence. I'm definitely not going to be getting in too deep into what the Fibonacci sequence is. It is a sequence of numbers, and it is definitely something used in a lot of different aspects of life in general. Funny enough, the Fibonacci finds its way in a lot of different things, not only in the financial markets, Really, you can even see it in nature. It's a very interesting sequence. And in this case, there are what are called inside numbers as well. So for example here, if we wanted to add different levels here, we could just go on Optimus Flow and add these different levels. Now, personally, I do not like to use any of the numbers inside pretty much from the measured move, right? So the measured move is a big part of the extension. The measured move is essentially what are you measuring to essentially get these Fibonacci extensions, these, these inside numbers, uh, these inside uh, ratios. And essentially what you want to look for is you want to look for the most recent measured move. And so depending on what time frame you're on, you could actually have multiple 0.618 extensions that you're looking at. So maybe you're looking at the daily chart, which we're on here for the MNQ, that's the micros for NASDAQ. And you can see here, this most recent measured move here, pretty much this pivot to this bottom, that is your measured move. So you can see here, if you wanted to put a one here, or a zero, and then make this one, We're essentially connecting the high, and this is from December 27th of 2023, to the low of January 4th of 2024. And this is the move, right? This is, this is our measured move. And this is what becomes essentially if the 0 0.618 extension becomes a function of, it becomes a function of this move. Now, a lot of people like to use the inside numbers as I mentioned, uh, but if you are measuring a move, you generally have potential pivots within that measured move. So why would you really use the inside Fibonacci levels if you already have price action that has really confirmed this is an area where the market has already really experienced either support or resistance? So in this case, you can see here, rather than using an inside Fibonacci level, I would just use this previous support zone here. And you can see that this was an important area after the initial bounce, we popped up, we pulled back, and we bounced off this area, and this was simply just a previous support zone. So it's really up to the individual market participant how they want to use Fibonacci levels. Uh, as I mentioned, I personally like to just use previous levels, previous pivot levels if I'm measuring something inside the measured move. But if I'm measuring something outside of the, outside of the measure move that's hitting new all-time highs, this is really where you want to use the 0.618 extension. You can see these are essentially 161.8%. Generally, people look at it as a 1.618 extension. These are percentages, though, just to highlight that. So as you can see here, in this 
particular move. We measured the move here. We were starting to move up again towards this previous all-time high. So this was the previous all-time high from the 27th of December. And so as we started to move up and break to new all-time highs, the 0.618 extension, in this case the 1.618 extension, was a perfect level for price to move to. Now, nothing in the market is 100%, right? You're never going to hit the 1.618 extension exactly perfectly. And depending on what you're looking at, you need to consider, you know, what is maybe a zone that I want to look at versus an exact number. In this case, 17,679.21. It's just not realistic to think that the market's going to move perfectly up to this level and then reverse or, or not break above it intraday or anything like that. So generally, depending on what you're looking at, if you're looking at an extremely volatile name, let's say, you know, maybe Tesla goes up to new all-time highs, Tesla is a very volatile stock. So you may want to add a 1% or 2% margin of error around your 1.618 extension. Whereas MNQ, pretty much NASDAQ futures, you know, you may want to just use 0.25%. So it, it really just depends on what you're looking at. The more volatile the name and the higher beta the name is that you're looking at, generally you're going to have a little more volatility around these levels. And that's just not the 1.618 extension. That's anything in general, VWAPs, horizontal levels. The more volatile the stock, the, the more of a margin of error you want to have around these levels. So in this case, you can see, as we just discussed, this was not a perfect area, but it was a good area to establish a target and potential resistance. And you can see here, after multiple days of pretty much trading right at this 1.618 extension, we finally started to move to the downside. And with anything, you generally want to have maybe a confluence of, of things you're looking at. Just looking at the 1.618 extension and assuming that you're going to get a reversal here definitely is not something that you uh, that would really be successful over time. Now, if you maybe wanted to add an RSI to this, I like to use the 10 period RSI, uh, you can see here not only did we have price at this 1.618 extension, but we also had divergence on the RSI. So we had these, essentially these lower highs here. So you can see here if we draw this diagonal line on the RSI, we actually had a higher RSI reading on December 18th. Then we did at a higher point on the chart, higher price on the chart, and that was on January 24th. So you can see here, if I just connect this peak, which is this candle right here, and connect it here, we're essentially showing divergence at this 1.618 extension. So that's when it becomes a little more useful where you're combining it with other indicators in the market. So you can see here, divergence in this case is simply just we closed uh, on December, December 18th of 2023, right around 17,025. And then at a lower RSI reading on January 24th, we closed at right around 17,625. So higher closes on the daily candle, but lower closes, lower highs on the RSI. And so you can really use this confluence of both 1.618 extension potential resistance, but you're also cross-referencing it with the RSI showing negative divergence. And that will give you a much better, it will give you much better conviction on potentially seeing a reversal and that's what you can see here we just had big earnings uh, I did this video after hours on January 30th so we just had AMD report we just had Microsoft report Google report and you can see that we did get this pullback and this gap down as of now uh, things can change from here but really using the 1.618 extension can really help you more or less just get an idea of what is a potential upside target when you don't have anything to the left of the chart. One of the main misconceptions with not only Fibonacci ex uh, extensions, but anything in the market is that it's always going to be 100% correct. No, it's just a target. And you can see here that if you want to look for the next upside target, you can use the 261.8% extension, which essentially is just the 2.618 extension. So these are really just ways to gauge what is a potential level above and the reason why these work a lot of the time is because a lot of institutional 
traders, institutional money in general are looking at point 1.618 extensions. And I say 0.618 extension because you could have a 2.618, you could have a 3.618. But in this case, you can see that the market was rejected initially at this 1.618 extension with RSI negative divergence. And so this is hopefully a good example of how you can use these levels when you don't have anything else to look at to the left of the chart and you're pretty much trading at all time highs. This is not something that you can just use on futures as I'm using it here. You can use it on any asset really, crypto, you can use it on basic equities, uh, anything that's hitting a new all time high. You just want to find the most recent measured move, essentially the, the most recent move where you had a move down and a reversal. That's where you essentially have the measured move for the Fibonacci measured move. And then you just add the 1.618 extension. And you can see here, this is a great case study on price respecting this level. Not only once, but multiple days in a row, pretty much five days in a row, price just could not get through this 1.618 extension, consolidated, and then start to pull back once we got that RSI divergence. Hopefully this video is helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. And if you are in the market for looking for a new futures broker, definitely check out Optimus Futures for your futures trading, especially micros, contracts, and uh, that type of thing. And I am using the platform Optimus Flow, which is essentially the technical analysis platform for Optimus Futures. Have a great day. I hope this video was helpful in understanding a little more how you can use Fibonacci extensions to gauge potential targets and resistance zones when you are at all-time highs, and we'll see you in the next video.